Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. It is a gloomy, rainy day here in Philadelphia. I am basking in the warm glow of my laptop. It's time to talk about Love is Blind. If you guys know me, if you watch my monthly favorites videos, you know that I have mentioned Love is Blind before. Love is Blind is one of those things that's like so bad that it's so good. I won't even call it a guilty pleasure. It's a pleasure of mine. Like it's truly so garbage, but it's so entertaining. I love watching it. Love is Blind just came out with season four on Friday. So of course I binged it all in like 24 hours and I'm here to tell you my opinions. So this video is gonna kind of take you through the first five episodes that have been released. There are gonna be no spoilers beyond that. I know sometimes people will like look up like the marriage records in the state where this takes place and they can find out which couples like actually got married. You can do that if you want to. I will not be doing that. So this video kind of assumes that you have seen or that you're okay with hearing about the first five episodes that are out, but I'm not gonna be giving any other spoilers. I'm just here to talk about what we know so far, what has happened in this season and my commentary on it. So overall, Love is Blind, this is season four. Love is Blind has been honestly worse and worse every season in terms of like the quality of the relationships that appear on this show. I think in season one, before the show had premiered and like before anyone had had any response to it, the couples who joined this show were a lot more, I wanna say genuine. I know there's some degree of like clout chasing when you are applying to be on a reality TV show, but like there was no way for them to know whether the show would be a success or like what kind of outcome it would have in terms of like social media interest after the show. So I think that's why the first season was much more like genuine seeming and like the couples that are still together, at least the one couple, Lauren and Cameron, who's like everyone's favorite Love is Blind couple, it seemed like a really genuine relationship because there was no way for them to predict like the outcome of what the show was gonna be like. But now if you look at like the second, third, and now the fourth season, it's really clear to me that a lot of people seem to be going on this show because it's a really easy way to just skyrocket yourself towards influencer money and influencer success. So I really think that a lot of the people that are applying on this show now, they don't really wanna find love as much as they want to be on TV and get attention. So I do think that, like I said, the quality of relationships in this show has really gone down because I think people are not really in it for marriage. They're in it for being on reality TV. I will say though, one thing that's pretty interesting to me about this season that's going on now is that most of the contestants are in their late 20s or early 30s. So this age scale is a bit pushed back than the other seasons. I feel like the other seasons were mostly people in their 20s, including like their early 20s. I think some people were like 23. Now there's a few that are younger, but most of them are like in their late 20s, early 30s. And I wonder if that helps with like feeling more like you're actually ready to settle down and like start a marriage, which is the purpose of the show, supposedly. But maybe not. We'll get to that. Something else that I find interesting just more generally about this season is that some of the contestants are a lot more like regular looking and I don't mean that in a bad way I don't mean to say that like anyone in this season is bad looking or unattractive or anything like that but I think in previous seasons most of the contestants were very like model level like perfection type of pretty in this season like they're all beautiful the men are all very attractive but they tend to look a bit more like real people like there's quite a bit more diversity there's a lot more body size there's different ethnicities so i feel like they maybe are making an effort to cast people who are a little bit older and who are more diverse and like more regular looking than before so i like that but now to get more into like the meat and potatoes of the actual show so if you're not familiar love is blind basically has people going on blind dates in these little pods where they can only talk to each other through a wall without seeing each other and then if they like each other they can decide to get engaged and then only after that do they see each other in person and then all of the couples who end up getting engaged go away on a trip to Mexico that's supposed to be this like romantic getaway where they can get to know each other in real life. Then after that they go home to the real world and they live in a, an apartment together for a few weeks and then they get married or at least they go to the altar and they have to say yes or no. So, so far what we've seen is the pod stage and the Mexico a vacation 
gestation stage. So that's kind of how I'm gonna break this video up. I'm gonna talk about the pods and all the couples in the pods and then talk about the Mexico vacation and what goes down there. So as always, we start out in the pods with our 30 contestants, 15 men and 15 women, all getting to know each other, kind of like speed dating, blind dating in different combinations. And the first episode was very heavily focused on like different match combinations and different potential partners. The first episode is always just kind of like getting to know everyone, putting people in the mix. You do see a little bit more of the other contestants, but overall, always in every season of Love is Blind, they pretty quickly like zero in on who is gonna be picked eventually. Like even if you don't know, what couple they're gonna end up with like you can tell right away like okay this girl is gonna end up in a couple because they interview her a lot they focus on her a lot and then sometimes you'll get a person being featured who like they'll end up in a love triangle but they won't end up in one of the proposals so that definitely happens in this season. There's quite a lot of love triangles in this season, which we'll get to in a second. And usually in every other season, I think all the other seasons, the first episode has ended with the first engagement. That did not happen in this season. We get left on a cliffhanger. But let's talk about the first couple that gets together, which is Brett and Tiffany. Brett and Tiffany are both in their like mid to late thirties. They've both been single for a while. It seems like they're both just really like waiting and looking for the right person. The two of them, seem to connect right away and I don't really think we ever see them making any other connections or talking to anyone else they're just really interested in each other right away we do get a bit of drama with Tiffany and Brett at the very end of the first episode because Brett is like really pouring out his feelings and emotions to her in the pod and she doesn't respond and he's like hello are you still there and it turns out that she has fallen asleep he doesn't know that he can just hear her like not saying anything so he has no idea if she like left the room if she's not interested anymore so actually she just fell asleep and he gets kind of angry and he leaves and he's like talking to the other men like oh my god i can't believe this like i was pouring my heart out to her and she didn't even say anything like i'm done with this man like screw this you know he's really angry and then later you see like some of the other women coming into her pod to like wake her up and she's like, oh my God, I can't believe like he was talking to me and I completely fell asleep. Like I feel so bad. And like this whole thing with her falling asleep felt very staged to me. Like it just kind of seemed like this couple is really unproblematic. They really like each other. They're not involved in a love triangle. So they had to like pepper in some kind of drama with them. And so they just like made up this whole thing of her falling asleep because later the next time they see each other, she apologizes to him and he's like, okay, well, I really like you. Like, I'm sorry I got mad. You know, like they work it out right away. So I feel like that drama was really like manufactured for the show, but whatever. Brett and Tiffany are happy together. She apologizes to him. They move forward as a couple and he proposes to her. They are truly the unproblematic faves of this season. If you ask me, they both seem like they are mature, genuinely happy together, ready to get married. Like I have no problem with this couple. However, every single other couple of which there are four all of them get involved in love triangles so let's move on to the next one which means unfortunately it is now time to talk about micah micah sucks micah is my least favorite person that i think has ever been on love is blind i cannot stand her i was writing down my notes about the show while i was watching it like in real time and then i was reading them back and like every other note that i wrote is about how much i hate micah she is an extremely immature bully like high school bully type of mean girl and she gets involved in a love triangle with two of the men kwame and paul she's also like besties with this other girl named arena who we will come back to later but like arena is also a high school bully type of mean girl and every time i have to watch the two of them talking together i feel like i'm watching my last two brain cells fight to stay alive i hate watching them they're so mean they're so rude they're just like they're bitches like they just suck and i understand that some of that is just like in the edit like they can edit somebody to look bad, but I really feel like these girls like gave them so much material to work with. But anyway, Micah is in this love triangle with Kwame and Paul. So Kwame really likes her. It's really obvious that he really likes her. She's kind of like his first choice. And he gets to the point where it seems like he's ready to propose to her, but then they get in the room and they start talking. And before he can really say anything, 
she starts saying that she wants to explore other connections and she's like basically breaking up with him. And he gives this response that's super mechanical and he's just like, okay, thank you for telling me. I'm glad that you let me know that. I wish you all the best. And then he leaves. In the moment, he's very like, okay, that's fine. Like he doesn't have a breakdown or anything, but then later in his interviews and like in the house with the other guys, you see him like breaking down and crying and he's like, I really liked her. And like, he's really sad about not being able to be with her, which is a waste because she's a bitch. He just doesn't know. He really like dodged a bullet not being with her. But anyway, we will come back to that. We sure will in Mexico. So Kwame's out of the picture. Meanwhile, there's Paul. Paul's in a love triangle with Micah and this other girl named Amber. Micah basically manipulates Paul because Paul's the one she's trying to pick. She manipulates him into breaking up with Amber, which is the girl that he likes. Amber is really cool. She's like in her early 30s. She's a flight attendant. She's been divorced twice already. And she seems like she's really genuinely like coming here to find somebody real. Like I, she just seemed to me like a really nice girl. Paul really likes her and he basically gets sent in by Micah to like be forced to break up with her and he is struggling with it so bad like he clearly does not want to break up with her and it's, it's really hard for him but he does it anyway because Micah's manipulating him and then he comes back and proposes to Micah. I truly do not understand what Paul sees in Micah. She's like giving nothing like she's very surface level. She's very generic. I don't remember watching them have any deep conversation or like like anything that they really connected on or agreed on. It really just seems to me that Micah wanted to stay on the show, become an influencer, and go on a free Mexico vacation. And because she had two guys who liked her, she just picked the one she thought she liked more. So I didn't like that. There's also a scene after Paul breaks up with Amber, Amber's really sad and she's like crying in the house. And there's a scene where like Micah and Arena are listening in. They're trying to like snoop on what she's saying and like, what is she crying about? And then they're just like laughing and making fun of her while she's crying. And it's just very like high school bully behavior. I hate watching it. To me, it is like vile behavior. And they are like this the entire time. So that's the second couple to get engaged, Micah and Paul. Paul, we didn't really talk about too much yet. He's just kind of like, he's a Johnny. Like anyone who went to St. John's, if you watch Love is Blind, let me know if you agree. Paul seems like a Johnny. He's just like a cute, aloof, smart guy who's into this hot girl. And like, I don't know. I think he's cute actually. He's probably my favorite of all the men, but like, why does he like Micah? Like his judgment is clearly not great that he likes Micah. She's giving nothing. But anyway, the two of them get engaged. I'm unhappy. I hate Micah. I don't want her to be happy. Okay, so the next couple we can talk about is Marshall and Jacqueline. They are also involved in a love triangle, but their love triangle is kind of separated from all the other couples. So the third person in the love triangle is this guy named Josh. So Jacqueline really likes both Marshall and Josh. And let me just say, Jacqueline is one of my favorite people in this show. Like she is beautiful, number one. Her hair is gorgeous. She's super funny. Like she's definitely fulfilling the role of like comic relief and like she makes these little side comments in like every scene and they are so funny and then the one guy she's with is Marshall who is more like kind of quiet sleek reserved he seems a bit like mature and like put together for me and then there's the other guy Josh I don't really remember seeing her like talk to Josh that much they don't show a lot about him there's one scene where he's talking in like um like a confessional interview after he gets rejected by her. Spoiler alert, she's gonna reject him, but he looks like a super villain. Like he's wearing this like big turtleneck and like a blazer and he just like, it's giving super villain. Basically, Jacqueline likes both of them. She's caught between them. And there's a scene where she's having this conversation with Marshall about how she feels guilty because Josh told her that like, if she's not the one for him, he's gonna go home because there's no one else here for him and it's making her feel really guilty. Then Marshall wants to like be a big like tough man and be like, oh, I'm gonna fight for my girl. And he goes and like confronts Josh and they have this whole like super cringy conversation slash argument over who gets to be with Jacqueline and like, I just didn't like that. I thought it felt quite like controlling almost of him. Like it felt like a red flag of like how he's gonna behave later that he was so controlling of like, I'm gonna take this girl and she's mine. Like, 
I didn't really like the way he handled it. There's also another scene during all of this where Jacqueline is like in the house and she's crying because she's conflicted between the two guys. And once again, who's there laughing and making fun of her? Micah and Irina. They're like watching her cry and they're just like in the corner laughing and mocking her like, I'm sick of these girls. But in the end, Marshall and Jacqueline end up working it out and they get engaged. I don't really have any strong feelings about this relationship. I don't know that I see it going anywhere. I don't know. I feel like we don't know enough about them yet. Like they're a little bit boring. Like out of all the couples, I think that they're maybe like the most forgettable, but she's really funny. Like she's one of my favorite characters. Marshall, I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna last. I guess we'll see. I'm kind of keeping my eye on this one. The next couple to talk about is Kwame and Chelsea. And if you remember, Kwame is the one who was initially interested in Micah. So he was in a love triangle with Micah and Paul. Now his other girl that he likes is Chelsea. I think that like looking at them together, like they look really good together. They make a lot of sense to me. They both seem like quite mature and like intentional about what they're looking for. And while I was watching it, I wrote this note where I said something like, you know, they look good together for now, but I can foresee there being drama later on because Chelsea is kind of like his second choice. And I felt like that was gonna come up again. And spoiler alert, it does. Their whole like pod conversation, it's cute. It's a little cringy. Like there's a scene where he brings in his guitar and he's like singing to her and she's crying, which to me is like a bit dramatic. Like the song is like not that great. I don't know. I feel like someone serenading me, I feel like would just make me feel uncomfortable, but she's like, crying and overwhelmed and then he gives her this whole speech about like he keeps saying like you know what's crazy is that and then he says something that's like not crazy whatsoever like he's talking about how usually I wear black jeans every day but today I woke up and I picked khakis and my khakis look better on me anyway. And like he compares that to like how he's choosing her. I don't know, I don't get it. To me, none of that is romantic, but she falls for it and they end up getting engaged. And like I said, I think on the surface, they look really cute together. They seem happy together. Visually, they're like a beautiful couple, but I had a feeling that there would be trouble in paradise. So we will come back to that. The last couple to talk about is Zach and Irina. And unfortunately, Irina does get picked as one of the fiancés. I hated this so much. So the two of them were in a love triangle with another girl whose name is Bliss. Bliss, I thought overall was pretty cute. She and Irina had this very kind of toxic outwardly competitive thing where like they both knew that they liked Zach and they were being very blatant with like competing for his attention and I really didn't like that like to me it's always sad to watch two women just like compete for a man's attention I found Bliss to be like very cute very genuine like really coming to this with like good intentions Irina I find to be a huge clout chaser like she seems incredibly fake she's a snake she's trying to lie and manipulate her whole way through this she keeps telling Zach like all of this dirt on Bliss to try to like make him not like Bliss anymore and Bliss is kind of doing the same thing like it's just very uncomfortable meanwhile Zach is like initially listen to me we will come back to this I thought he was very cute. He was like my favorite one. He is a criminal defense attorney. He has a tragic backstory about like growing up in a really rough situation with his mom. His mom passed away. Like he just seemed like a genuinely really cute guy. As we get to know him better, he's a little creepy. Basically, Zach is really torn between the two women and he keeps telling them like, I could see myself marrying either one of you. And I'm like, these women are completely different from each other. Like, I don't know what you're seeing in Arena. He has a conversation with Arena where he literally calls her vicious. And he also says that he has the vibe that like, if somebody hurts her, she will hurt them back. And he's saying that as if it's like a positive quality that she has. And to me, that's like a huge red flag. I don't know, like he's identifying her as like a vicious, cruel person, but somehow he still likes her. He just really seems naive to me. Like he doesn't know how to read people. I kind of get an impression, like especially later on when they go to Mexico, that maybe he is like possibly neurodivergent, maybe has autism or something like that. Like he just seems like he's a little bit different than other people and like the way he processes information and like relationships and social situations. I don't know. I don't want to like diagnose anybody with anything, but like that's just kind of the impression I get from him. I think he's really naive with relationships and he ends up 
picking Arena, which is a huge disappointment to me. And one of the reasons I was so disappointed he picked Arena is because now I knew that the whole Mexico trip was gonna just be Micah and Arena, my two least favorite characters, like bitch festing it up and being rude and making fun of everyone. And I was like, why are we enabling these high school bully girls to continue their disgusting behavior? But that is exactly what happened. So Bliss ends up having a very mature reaction to being rejected. She is definitely sad about it, but she also knows that like the person who's right for her will choose her and she shouldn't have to beg anybody for their attention, which is very important and very true. So Zach proposes to Arena and then they meet. And actually I didn't really talk about any of the other scenes where like the couples get revealed and they like meet each other face to face for the first time. Like I felt like all the rest of them were very like, like oh my god you look amazing like you look exactly how i pictured you like there was nothing really notable about any of the other couples meeting each other but zach and arena meeting was so incredibly awkward like they saw each other and you could tell immediately that arena is like not interested in this guy at all like they walk up to each other and they hug and she's like okay like should we sit down and they like sit down together and they don't kiss. They have no chemistry, like there's no attraction between them at all. And he's just kind of like staring at her the whole time and like not blinking. And she says to him, to him to his face that it's creepy and that he looks like a cartoon character and she's like freaked out by it. Like she starts being mean to him about his appearance immediately. And also he is kind of creepy. Like there's some close-ups of his face where I'm like, are you okay? Like, are you maybe a serial killer? I don't know, but yeah. The whole pod thing ending with Zack and Arena meeting each other and like obviously being so not interested was an interesting way to like close out the pod chapter of the show. I knew right away like this relationship is over before it even begins. But now we can move on to their vacation in Mexico. So Nick and Vanessa Lachey, who are useless, irrelevant, and unimportant to this show, <laughs> appear. Like, by the way, we still exist, guys. Like, we're technically the host of the show. They appear and they're like, now the couples will go to Mexico to see if their love works in real life. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, the best couple is definitely Brett and Tiffany. And like, the second best one is probably Kwame and Chelsea. Like, those are the two that I liked the most. So they get to Mexico. Um, we can just go through talking about them one by one once again. So first off, Brett and Tiffany. They they just seem like so happy to be together. They look great together. They have great chemistry. There's a really cute scene where he tells her that he got her a swimsuit to wear. And in my head, I was like, oh no, it's gonna be this like super sexy, like little tiny bathing suit. And it's gonna make her uncomfortable. And then it turned out to be this like very beautiful, like very modest, just like lovely swimsuit that looked great on her. And I was like, oh, this is like a very thoughtful gift. They seem to have a lot of like physical chemistry together. There's one shot where they're like together in bed and she's like in her underwear and it's like shot like from right behind her ass and she's like on top of him like grinding on him and they're just like showing her whole ass and I was like okay girl like get it girl you know but I was surprised that they like showed that much but they just seem happy together they're the best couple for sure they're both very mature they seem happy together they're respectful of each other they're happy to be here they have great chemistry and there's no drama it's like drama-free king and queen. Love to see it. I love them. I really hope that they stay together because so far they're like the unproblematic faves. As for Micah and Paul, we're gonna come back to Micah in more detail because she gets herself into some big drama. But in terms of her relationship with Paul, Paul has an interview where he's saying that in the past he has gone for more granola type girls. And he says something really funny about how like, he's like, it's not that they're witchy type of girls, but they're like brewing potions. And I was like, okay, yeah, so like witchy type of girls. Like he's just describing the normal type of woman that he goes after and it's like nothing like Micah. Like Micah is like a Barbie doll bitch type of girl. We also start seeing Micah saying that she is still attracted to Kwame. Like she meets him in Mexico. Like she sees him in person for the first time and she's like, oh, like I'm really attracted to him. We see Paul saying he's attracted to Irina and he's like questioning his choice about being with Amber. So like their relationship seems quite fuzzy, but their relationship together is not explored as much because like I said, Micah gets herself involved into another situation, which we'll come back to in a second. But briefly to talk about Marshall and Jacqueline. So they seem to be doing okay in the beginning and they get into like a situation where Jacqueline starts having like a lot of emotions come up for her. She doesn't really ever like explicitly talk about this in the show, but she says something about how 
she's worrying about her family and coming back to real life and she's saying that like so many people are counting on her and she just seems to have a lot of anxiety um and in the moment i was just thinking maybe it's something like she has something going on in her family that she's not talking about like her relationships are really strained with them or she's like financially supporting them or something like that and it seems to be something like she feels really guilty to be taking time away from her family to come be on this show or like come be on this vacation in mexico and it's just like weighing on her really heavily and she kind of has a breakdown and starts crying and she's saying also that she's afraid she's gonna push marshall away because she always does that in the past and like she doesn't want to push him away but she doesn't know how not to so they have this scene where like she's crying he's trying to comfort her and it ends up working out okay where like they talk about it and she's as basically what my theory was that like she feels guilty about her family and they sort of resolve that but I think that that whole thing is probably going to come back up later but that's pretty much the most significant thing that happens with them in Mexico other than that Mexico is just Jacqueline making hilarious commentary about everyone else's business which I live for so now Chelsea and Kwame so Chelsea and Kwame if you remember had the whole situation with Micah where Micah was Kwame's first choice so unfortunately that comes back up i knew this was gonna happen kwame tells chelsea that he wants to have a conversation with micah and i'm just like why like didn't we already do this last season with like cole and colleen like it was just gonna be a repeat of that whole situation and it was kwame sees micah he says that he feels attracted to micah and he's like still sad that she rejected him basically she makes a really bad inappropriate joke where they're gonna take a shot together and she says a shot for a failed proposal and he gets really mad because he's like why the fuck would you say that like i really liked you you know like he's getting all in his feelings about that and then they go aside and they start talking about it and they're like i mean they're both clearly extremely drunk during this conversation but like they're talking and he's saying like you know why did you say that and confronting her but then the conversation shifts into like basically them just flirting they're like sitting on the edge of the pool and they're like leaning into each other and they're kind of holding hands and they're just talking for a long time and the whole conversation is really wildly inappropriate and chelsea is watching this all happen and she's getting really mad she's like why is he doing this micah tells kwame something like i was all in with you the whole time like they're basically talking about how they regret not picking each other which is super inappropriate and like micah saying the thing about i was all in with you the whole time is so fake because he was gonna propose to her and she knew that and she rejected him so like she is just whatever they're both being very messy chelsea ends up confronting him about it and she's really mad rightfully so and he kind of does this thing that i hate when people do in apologies where it's like a non-apology and they'll say like I'm sorry if I made you feel XYZ and it's like no it's not if you made her feel like she's telling you how you made her feel so you need to say I'm sorry that I made you feel that way and like leave it at that you know apologize and move on but he's trying to kind of backtrack and like defend himself and whatever and I didn't like that Chelsea like explains her point of view she's like you know she made a bad joke you should have just confronted her and said hey that's not cool with me and then moved on like you guys didn't have to have this whole other conversation and he like kind of listens to her but doesn't seem to take it that seriously and then there's a scene later where brett tells him basically the same thing that chelsea already told him and it seems like because now a man is telling him he's listening which to me was really annoying so he does apologize to chelsea and they seem to make up but like that is definitely gonna come back up like i just have a feeling that that will definitely come back later and then of course our least favorite couple zach and arena so they just have like a literally terrible time in mexico they have so many scenes where like he's trying to like be close to her or talk to her get to know her kiss her be near her and she's just like pushing him away physically turning away she's like very outwardly displaying like that she has an ick factor with him and she's not interested in him at all she said like when she wakes up next to him she just feels like oh boy not this again like she literally says that to his face like she's being so mean to him and he is continuing to try like i think he's genuinely trying to make it work with her and she's just being so rude and here's the thing if you don't like him you're not obligated to like continue a relationship with somebody you don't like like she shouldn't be forced to be with him because she's on this show like she has her agency she can make her own choices my problem with her is that she doesn't speak up and just tell him look i'm not interested like she knew she wasn't interested from the beginning but she's like 
stringing it along in my opinion just to get a free mexico vacation like she does not like him and she's not honest with him he literally has a scene with her where they're like out on a boat or something or maybe they're laying on the beach and he's telling her like you know i want to give this another chance but it takes two people for this to really work and her response is to like pick up a pillow and put it over her face like she just will not talk to him about how she's feeling she's not honest with him at all and it pisses me off there's also a scene where one of the other guys is asking zach like well how do you feel about bliss like now that all this is going down with arena how do you feel about bliss and zach says well to be honest bliss deserves somebody who picked her first and like, I think that's very respectable. Like he knows he made a mistake, but he also knows that like, like he says, Bliss should be with someone who knew that they wanted her. So he's like very conflicted about that. So Zach and Arena just kind of end up with Zach being really blunt and telling her like, look, I had a terrible time with you. You treated me like garbage. It's obvious that you don't like me. You put in no effort into this and you weren't honest. And she kind of tries to argue with him and she says that he's gaslighting her, which is totally bullshit. And they end up saying, okay, we're not gonna continue this anymore. One thing that I will say though, is that a few times throughout the episodes, Chelsea and Jacqueline specifically mention something about how they think Zach is creepy. Like they make comments of like, oh, that guy needs to stay away from me. Or like, I don't want to talk to that guy. He's weird. Like there's definitely other evidence from other cast members that they think Zach is weird. So like I said, I don't know if they're kind of bullying him because maybe he's neurodivergent or something, or if he is like genuinely a creepy person. I don't know, but that's the situation with Arena and Zach. It does not go well as we all knew it wouldn't. And the final little cliffhanger that we get left with is Zach getting home to Seattle and waiting for Bliss to come into a restaurant and he's like sitting down with Bliss and he tells her that he made the wrong choice and then it kind of cuts off from there. So that is my recap and a little bit of commentary about Love is Blind season four, episodes one through five. I will absolutely be keeping up with this show and watching the rest of the series. Let me know if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. I know this is a bit different content for me, but I'm kind of dipping my toe into a little bit of pop culture commentary type stuff. So definitely let me know if you want me to make another video about the rest of the series, my opinions and reactions to the show. I would love to keep talking about this with you guys. Love is Blind is one of my favorite guilty pleasure shows. Definitely let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you think about these couples? Who is your favorite? Who do you think will actually get married? And do you think that the show has gone downhill after all these seasons? Like, do you think that it's not authentic anymore? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!